Good morning. Good morning. All right. Well, I feel like I need to pray so that God will speak right through me for all of you. So let us pray. Dear Lord, I come to you right now to thank you and praise you for all your wonderful blessings and miracles. I ask you to give me all the wisdom that you can. Lord, you are my best friend. You know my heart. Please be with us right now. Please open the hearts of all the men to see that you made us women strong enough to endure so much. Let the men understand that without us women in their lives, life wouldn't be complete. Lord, touch each woman in this room today. Let them hear that a hard, horrible life can be turned into something oh so extravagant as long as they seek you through every moment. Lord, I love you. I pray all this in your precious name. Amen. Throughout my testimony, you will hear many scriptures from the book of Psalms, which is one of my favorite books of the Old Testament and has helped me through a lot of my obstacles in life. So, just a quick note, ladies, grab your tissues. <laughs> and men, just wrap your arms around your women, your wives, your ladies, to honor them. This may be a bit of a roller coaster of emotions. I'm here to tell you a true story of my life. Now let me stop right here because I'm probably going to read this word for word. I spent so much time praying and I didn't get words until all the last minute. And I don't know why God does that, but he does. So I want to make sure that you get every bit of every word. So please forgive me for reading it. This true story of my life and how God leaves he, does, he never leaves your side and has a, the ability to deliver you from the worst situations imaginable. As a little girl, I experienced church off and on throughout my, my family life. My family that were faithful Christians brought me to church on an almost every Sunday basis. And, began to, and I began to understand what, what God was all about and what family or what faith was really was. By the age of nine, I accepted God into my heart and was saved and baptized. From the time I was a newborn child, I had experienced several different types of abuse in my home. My father was an angry, physical, mental, and verbally abusive man. I remember praying for God to protect me from this evil early at age. A verse that stuck by me at this time, and it's such a short verse. The Lord is my strength and my shield. Psalms 28, 7. Over the course of the next few years, my abuse was taken to an all-new extreme level. By the age of 11, I had become a victim of childhood sexual abuse. With these horrible indiscretions being committed by my father. As I began to fear my life each day more and more to the point that I laid awake at night, Fearing the sounds of his footsteps approaching, I began to pray daily to the Lord to give me comfort. This verse spoke out to me many times throughout my time because you cry out for him. So this verse right here, when I called out to you, you answered me. You made me strong and brave. And at that time, I really needed it. That was Psalms 138.3. 
I thought, although I had a strong connection with the Lord in my heart, I feared this man of evil, and therefore I maintain a normal lifestyle appearance outside the home. And that is one of the hardest things to do, is to be abused and neglected and tortured at home, but go out and make, make it look like ain't nothing wrong. I think that's one of the things that's hardest for us victims is to make it look like everything's okay. But in deep, deep hiding nooks in your heart and your mind, it's not. It's not okay. Daily I knelt before God asking him to give me strength to stand before my biggest enemy. As the Lord began to show his strength to me, I, began, I became numb to the pain that I was enduring. This verse right here, you have armed me with strength for the battle. Psalms 18, verse 39. That verse right there, as I was becoming numb, he armed me with the strength to handle the battle of my enemy. After a long five years of daily abuse, daily praying for the nightmare to end, God installed me the power of fearlessness and delivered me from my horrible, horrible life. To imagine five years to go through something and many times I ask myself why that many years for a prayer to be answered why does it take so long well he has his own time time frame you can't ask him to answer you right away because he has his own ways and his own things that he's got to do inside you first and it sometimes us victims at first, we don't understand, but I do now because God has his teachings in the middle of it. Whether we think that something horrible happening to us is a teaching or not, it really is. It's a lesson that we all need to make sure that we're looking for through any horrible situation. There's always lessons to learn. This verse right here. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. Psalms 118.6 Daily, I always told myself in the mirror, that the Lord is on your side, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be okay and you just got to have faith in Him. That's what I used to tell myself. Little girl, little girl, 12, 13 years old. Everything's going to be okay. And it's hard for us grown women to say, oh, yeah, it's going to be okay. And sometimes we don't want to believe that. But a little girl believed it. This verse right here speaks out to me, too. And I, all, all these verses I had written down in a journal before I met my husband, before I got out of my abuse. And it is shocking that I came across them just for today. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Psalms 34, 17. I used to read this one most often because he heard my cry. And he delivers you out of your troubles. And I didn't know that he was going to deliver me out of my troubles until it came. The time came. Five long years it's a long time to wait for you to come out of your troubles. After the Lord gave me strength and encouragement, the process of a better and safe life began. My therapy and healing process began at a, group, a Christian group home. Just the structure I needed to get my life back on track to finding my self-worth. That is one thing that victims have the hardest time with is self-worth. Because we don't think we're worth it anymore. Once you're a victim, you crush your whole entire dream, your life, um, your thoughts of positivity, 
and your self-worth is gone. The largest part of my healing was to seek the ability through God to forgive my abuser. Somebody told me this, and I'm not sure who it was, but they said, if you don't forgive the people who have hurt you, you're going to live with it for the rest of your life. The weight is going to weigh you down. And for us women, we need to forgive, to move forward, to stand up on our feet, to stand tall and strong again. We have to. I accomplished this by attending a soul-lifting Christian event. I'm going to stop right there. This event was called Acquire the Fire, and I was on fire. I went to the, they did an altar call. You know, it wasn't just bands. You know, speaking of our youth going to uh, winter jams last night, it wasn't just, it wasn't just a band singing. They had speakers, and they did an altar call, and I went down, and I was shaking all over. I would, I just, I let it all to him because if you don't leave it to the Lord and forgive and move on, you're not going to feel any better. You just won't. At that time, I was trusting in the Lord that it was the right thing to do. The Lord says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Psalms 32, 8. I looked for God to tell me exactly what I needed to do, to teach me how I needed to be as a woman because I had no woman figure to tell me, hey, you're doing the right thing or you need to think this way. And I looked to him during my counseling period of healing, and I'm still healing. Victims never stop healing. So if you become a victim or you are a victim of any sorts, it is a lifelong thing you have to endure. You have to heal on a daily basis, and it doesn't stop. I will heal until the day I die. There's no day that I'm, that's not tough for me in some way. I'm going to pause right here and tell you, when I take my children grocery shopping, I'm on a high security, like as if I'm at the White House, White House, and I am focused on making sure that my four little people don't go off anywhere else and that I can, I can shop around people. It's hard. It is hard for me to walk into a store and not get one bad vibe off of somebody and continue what I'm doing. I used to, at the beginning of my marriage, run. <laughs> I used to run out of the store because the vibe of a horrible person walked by me. That is the hardest. That is the hardest. God gifted me with a, a sense of vibe. So if I've ever talked to you, you give off a great vibe. But if I run, <laughs> don't be scared. You just put, put off the bad vibe. And I probably won't come by you again. But that is my biggest thing, is making sure when I go out into this horrible world, and I say it is a horrible world, there's so many bad things going on that I'd much rather be confined in my home and be safe. But when I go out there, I have to be on high alert. Um, my kids are presidents, bigger than presidents, um, because I'm on alert for any bad person to stay away from us. And that's the hard part about being a victim, is you always have to think about those things on a daily basis. Protection, safety. After this great accomplishment of forgiveness, I felt as if the weight of the world was lifted off of me. Forgiving, forgiving is one of the number one things you have to think about as a victim. With me gaining strength day by day, I was able to achieve some of my dreams by beginning a healthy relationship with a wonderful young man to whom I married and became a mother 
of four beautiful children. That was just one of my dreams. I graduated from high school. I started a little bit of college. I got married to someone who never put a bad vibe on me. I never thought that I could ever dream of a man being something that special. Because once you're abused by a man, you don't want to have nothing to do with them. And for children, people sometimes look at me, you have children? Yeah, I have children. But I want to be the best mom that these children have ever came across because my mom was not there for me. She wasn't. She neglected me. She did not do her job, and I do my job. In my newfound life, I became a very busy young wife and mother who found the need for the Lord's teachings each and every day. I pray daily. Sometimes I pray all day. I don't start my prayers as, Dear God or Dear Lord. He's my best friend. I talk to him in the car. I sing with him in the car. I cut jokes with the Lord. He is my best friend. He's been with me every step of the way, and that's how you should have him. Because he wants that relationship with you. He really does. And I feel like a lot of us women need to be like that. This verse right here. Lead me by your truth and teach me for you are the God who saved me. <clears throat> All day long I put my trust in you. I love this verse. And you know what? Just a quick thought that it just came to me. I'm going to put this on a plaque because he did save me. And I'm going to put my trust in him every day of the week. Every day. Because without him, I wouldn't be here today. And I would not be breathing. And I would not have the children that I can encourage to come to church. To seek their relationship with him. I have one. One down, three to go. I have one down, three to go. To get to that point. That verse is from Psalms 25, 5. Today I am a confident, self-loving, powerful woman who turns, up, turns to prayer daily to keep my strength and faith in the Lord, for He delivered me from all of my fears. Victims fear daily different things. It's hard for us to have a personal relationship with our husbands. It is hard to have a personal relationship with our children. It is hard to have a relationship as friends with anybody because we're picking them, picking them apart. We are tearing every aspect of our life apart just to make sure that we're safe and that we're doing what we have to do to protect ourselves. Ever since I can remember, I've been wanting to help women who have been in similar situations of abuse, to help women feel great about themselves. Almost a year ago, I joined this Christian company in network marketing that strives to help women who were sexually abused as children. Knowing I'm a survivor, you know I had to join. I had to be a part of it. They have retreats across the world for these women to go and heal. I didn't have that opportunity to have a retreat to go to, to have people direct me in how I need to heal. I've turned to God 100%, and it's been amazing. I've had little bits and groups of people in my life, in and out, and I still, and I have all of you who have helped me heal in some way. You just don't know it. It is very important. 
I am wanting to help touch the lives of all the women that I can to help them move on and to help them create a dream. That is something I used to sit and dream, but I never created one that I wanted to strive for each day. I didn't want to because I was terrified. But this company that I joined, they helped open me up to a, a person I didn't never know I had inside of me at all. I have this big dream and I'm going for it and I'm running. I'm not walking anymore, I'm running. But I'm running with the Lord beside me because without Him, I'm not going anywhere. The mission of this company is so amazing. Their mission is to uplift, empower, and validate women across the world. Do you know how many women there are in this world? More than men. <laughs> there really is. There really is. We're very important people. And without us, this world would probably not even exist. This mission is my new future purpose to helping women and touching their lives in such glorious ways. One woman at a time, I pray I make an impact on their confidence in themselves. My journey with this has just begun, but it's not near the end. So I've told you my life story in bits and pieces, not any detail to help encourage any of you women who have, have had obstacles or fears that you're trying to overcome in life, to put your trust and faith, faith in the Lord 100%. Give it, give it all 100. Don't do 50%. Don't do 25. Don't do 75. Not even 99.9. .9. Do it 100%. Because you're going to see that if everything that he has to offer will come out you like an explosive rocket ship. And no matter how hard it gets and how long it takes, God hears you and will give you strength and comfort to get through it. I would not be here with confidence if I did not put my faith and trust in him to help me get through those nights of crying. I I used to cry. Let me just tell you this small story real quick. I don't even have it wrote down. And it just came to mind. I told you that the Lord was going to speak through me. But um, at the beginning of my marriage, I used to sob in my sleep. To sob in my sleep. Cry. And my husband didn't have a clue of how to handle it. Us victims, we have different ways we let it out. You could be sleeping. You could be awake. You could be standing in the middle of the grocery store and just start sobbing. I do. I did. For a long time. But I had God beside me every step of the way. He knew my heart. He knew my mind. And he knew my intentions. So give him all of you, 100%. Don't stop. Don't let people in this world, don't let things in this world get in the way. Our life is so busy. I find myself, I recognize myself, I ask God for forgiveness daily that I have let this world and my things, my schedule, to get in the way of doing what I need to do, and that's giving him every bit of me. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Psalms 34, 4. I'm proud of that verse. I'm very proud of that verse. I sought him when I was a young girl and he answered me along the way. And at the end of those five years, he delivered me and he's still delivering me. 
that's the hardest thing to recognize is your fears that are ongoing after you've you've left all those troubles those fears those after fears he still delivers you from those i've conquered so many so many fears recently a little side note my father was a truck driver and i used to be terrified of semi trucks dump trucks because part of my abuse was part it had to do with those i rode with my dad a lot of places and my husband fell in love with dump trucks i married a man who done exactly what my father used to do that was a huge fear that was a huge fear, and it was right in my face daily. I was around them. I could walk right by them, just walk, just, just a little bit, you know, just be around him working on the dump trucks. But I could never step inside. I never wanted to be inside of one. Oh, I shook all over. The day before my 31st birthday this year, I stepped inside of one of those trucks. And I took my first ride with my husband, who had nothing to do with my abuse. <laughs> he was just an innocent person loving exactly what part of my abuse was about. And I did it, and it felt good. My chest was so tight, I shook a little bit. But then I took another ride, and then another ride, and it got easier. So only, we're only on a couple rides now, okay, today, because the truck left the state. But I will have to say that's a fear I'm going to continue conquering because it's important to my future that I be a part of him and, and what he likes, my husband, instead of fearing it and stressing and worrying and we women, we do that. We stress, we worry, we just take it all out on ourselves. Don't do that anymore. Conquer those fears like you're the boss. I am the boss of my fears, and I'm going to conquer them. Looking back on my past, I see where God was there each step of the way. It's so amazing to know when you cry out, or call upon the Lord that he answers or responds in the most graceful ways. It's us women who get more taken advantage of, taken for granted, looked at in the most disrespectful ways. But with the help of our great king and our husbands, we can be protected and cherished. I am honored to still be alive and very grateful for my faith. I hope us women can stand strong through the times we feel weak, conquer all our fears with the mindset of not giving up on ourselves and to move forward in getting our dreams to come true. My mindset is so much different now. I look back and my mindset was um, fogged. It was like a fog across my mindset, my mind, my brain. It was just not set where it needed to be, but it's taken me staying, talking to my best friend and moving forward and never giving up on myself to get through it. I say this to myself now, I will rise. But you know what? You will rise too. And together as women, we will rise. And for you young ladies, remember to guard your heart and always be aware of your surroundings because the devil can act out through many different ways. Always believe and trust in God that he created you to be an, an extravagant and beautiful, strong woman in every aspect of your life. He really did. 
Do not, do not let this world tell you different. You are beautiful, you're amazing, spectacular, extravagant, ordinary, wonderful. You are all those great words. Do not stop telling yourself that. That it was my biggest thing I could not start telling myself. I wake up each and every morning and I tell myself, you might see makeup on me now, but I'm barefaced in all me in that mirror. And I might even be naked. And I tell myself I am wonderful and I'm great. And I'm going to do something so amazing today because I have my best friend. Make him your best friend. I promise you, you will pull through everything if you have your best friend. You think those girls in school are your best friend? They're not. They're in for themselves. For sure they are. You be for you in this world and have your best friend, the Lord God, on your side and you will go places. And when in doubt or fear, always turn to him for comfort and reassurance of yourself, your faith and your purpose in life. Do it. Turn to him. <sighs> that wasn't so bad, was it? All right, well, I want to pray because i got to pray. Oof. I'll pray at the beginning, pray at the end. We're going to do it, okay? All right, bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you to thank you for speaking through me, for adding in those notes that I didn't have written down. I knew you would. In hopes that I told my story to touch each and every person in this room. Bless them, Lord. Let them see that there's people like me in this world that they walk by every day. Let them understand to cherish every woman in this world. Just do it. We deserve it. You made us strong for a reason. I pray that the young ladies will turn to you for every hardship that they may encounter in life. That every woman knows that she is strong enough to endure and overcome her past. And that every man may see the true strength and beauty in women. Please go with us each day, and every, each and every one of us, as we go out into this world and help us to overcome our fears and conquer our dreams. In your most heavenly precious name, I pray, amen.